September the 24th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at the satellite images over the uh, Atlantic Ocean. It's called the Wide Atlantic View from NOAA. And in this morning's video, we were looking at uh, Hurricane Sam. It's still a cat. Uh, one according to the last update but I think in the new update it's going to be a cat too you can see here that the eye is clearly forming and you have a tropical storm here off the east coast now I think that one is Teresa we'll check it out I'm not sure of that one uh, it's expected to um, not uh, contact land you may get some wind and stuff up in Bermuda but I told you if things changed on this hurricane in the Atlantic, Sam, I would come in with an update. And they have. And let's take a look at that. And looking at it very closely again, you can see the strengthening. And that's what we're going to be dealing with. This was anticipated up to a Category 4 hurricane. What was not anticipated is the new Canadian model showing an impact possibly in New York or maybe just north of there in Boston, so right in that area, and we know this is going to change slightly. And I'd said in this morning's video what would be the determining factor would be how the high-pressure system in the Atlantic and this storm would react with each other. You can see here from Fox uh, 10 down in Florida, guys, Category 1 now, but by 2 a.m. this morning, a couple of hours after midnight, it's expected to be a Cat 2, and you could see that eye wall forming. And very quickly throughout the day Saturday go from a cat 3 and then before Sunday at 2 p.m. a cat 4 here sometimes early in the morning Sunday so in a couple of days we're gonna be looking at the cat 4 that continues till Monday at 2 p.m. the last sighting on a cat 4 and by Tuesday 2 p.m. it's slowed down to a cat 3 now the this storm is tracking just a little more south and uh, to the east or to the west excuse me than it was this morning you can see it's a little closer in the overall um, path or the overall tracking here in this cone a little closer to the northern side of the uh, windward islands now again the storm can go anywhere within this cone and that's what the different models are about but i want to look at uh, the canadian model but here we're at 85 mile per hour sustained winds Moving west now, I hadn't made that turn at 12 miles an hour, 986 millibars pressure. This was at 5 p.m. Uh, advisory. Now, if you watch the channel for the last few years, there's always two models that I mentioned. When they get tight or they get spread out, that uh, usually they will come back together or at least pay attention to both of them. And those are the CMC model and the Navy model. The CMC listed at the top is this light green area here to the far left or the far west of the other tracking and nav gym is a little more uh, it's off center to the east somewhat and most of the models are stopping right there the cmc is what i'm concerned about because their models have changed and it's this one right here guys it's tracking a little more to the west and again the interaction with what the high pressure system is going to do is important in this next model we're going to look at notice this is a Canadian model a couple of changes we need to pay attention to here's your time stamp at the bottom September the 24th that's today and as we go up until October 3rd pay attention to the changes here and it's um, kind of a small representation in this model of an almost category 2 hurricane here but uh, it is what it is and we step this thing forward we go through up into September 25th. You're starting to see it strengthening more. It's going to move north of the Windward Islands. And it, about right in here, as it gets uh, east of Bermuda, uh, the Bahamas, excuse me, is where the spaghetti model stopped. Notice that is October the 1st. Now here it's moving again to the left of uh, Bermuda, not to the right. And the high pressure is building. Notice uh, going from light orange to dark orange to reds, uh, even up into the purple here. That could be, uh, the, again, the deciding factor. We move it forward. Again, this is Canadian model. And here the pressure is just too much. And it's going to start curving in just off the uh, tip of Long Island into, I would guess that would be Nantucket, Boston area. This is October the 3rd. Step it forward again. 
October 3rd coming ashore. Right there, 3rd is still. Uh, notice your timestamp. So October 3rd is going to be the big day uh, of um, the most wind, the most rain, uh, any type storm surge. That is if this model holds up. But it, I mentioned for the last few days this storm would be dependent on that high pressure area. And this is what we're seeing. We'll just let it play through at speed. Conforming. We go right there. Another storm coming off the African coast. There it goes, possibly what is, uh, I think, was Teresa. And you're sure this is October the 4th and you've been through the most of it. If this is the path and um, you will be experiencing a lot of rain in that area, it will probably start moving back northeast. So St. John's and Newfoundland, Foundland, pay attention to that because you notice in the last few frames as it's coming ashore, it wants to do that loop. And a lot of them will do it and be pulled right back out into the Atlantic. Just like that. See, it start that loop. Then you know what it's going to do at that point. So I just wanted to bring that up. I've been saying that it didn't look like that it was going to affect the U.S., <clears throat> the mainland at all. Excuse me. But uh, those things have changed. So we're going to watch it and pay attention to it. You do, do so uh, also. New York, you've been through it with the remnants of Ida. Do you remember Sandy, anybody in that area? I hope you do. We don't. We hope we don't have that again. I hope tomorrow the high pressure is uh, changing and opening back up, but uh, it will be updated from now on uh, for the next few days. It's a heads up. Be safe.